the right. Are you coming up or are you staying down there? Oh, you're coming up, mate. Come on in. Come on in. Oh, come on, you lazy bugger. There you go. Good. Okay. Yeah, I know. It's somebody outside. Right. Ooh, let's do. A, you know, let's do a few more minutes, and then we'll take you for a walk. Okay. Uh, where was I? Uh, right. I, oh yeah, I was yammering on about the differences between the format of extras causing the problem. So we either. Oh. Mm -hmm. on the keyboard okay uh, yes right differences in format <laughs> differences in format yeah so that's going to cause us uh, some difficulty uh, so how uh, how are we going to deal with that or do, do we even bother dealing with it hmm tough one now, the truth of the matter is that we're probably going to end up using this version of FDisk in reality, okay, because uh, when we're patching an image in the, uh, in the tool chain for our build, chances are we're just going to run it in the lightest weight container we've got, so, and that will be something like a VisiBox or an Alpine image, which are very compact. Uh, so we could write the thing to just work hmm. yeah so we could just write the thing to work with uh, the F disk that comes on Alpine rather than the more general bash one so what happens if somebody runs our script on bash? Uh, is there a convenient way for us to detect which is which? Ooh. All right, let's just try something. If I if I actually change to the vagrant subdirectory there. And then rerun this without a path on there. Hmm. Yeah, that's no help. I thought we might be able to use the uh, path to this side, but we can't. Uh, is there an easy way for us to check? Okay, how about. Oh, now then, I don't think can we work on our point. Oh, it does. Okay, so that's in S bin. So, what about that? This one will be in S bin as well, won't it? Mm. You're not helping, you know.
Uh, I suppose that's one way of telling the difference. Not very reliable, though, isn't it? Uh, what if we do f disk minus z perhaps? Ah, come on. Uh, right, so that's one. Maybe we're making it more difficult than we need to. Maybe we'll just run it inside a regular shell. I trust luck. you think mm. it's just you're really not helping you know Come on, settle down. There we go. All right, let me sit there for a little bit. Can you sit there? Can you sit there? What? Uh, does this actually have a bash installed on it? No. Right. I suppose we could just run the patch in a Debian container. See, this is, these are the decisions that you have to make, I guess, when you're designing these things. So the choices are this. We can either uh, rather than running up a lightweight image like with this, because uh, one alternative okay, would be to start uh, a Debian based box. So if we just replace that with Debian and actually explicitly tell them to start a bash session, then Okay, so now if I do uh, disk L, they went 2020, blah blah blah. Okay, so now we've got consistent, uh, consistent output. All right, but the cost of doing that is. Uh, 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 yeah, so you can see here that the Debian image is 140 meg, whereas the Alpine image is 5 meg. 
All right, so we've got a huge difference in the size of the actual image that we're using. So uh, what we have to decide is do we want to sacrifice some size in order to have one simple interface or do we write our script to only work on the ash shell that is on the alpine shell um, with a different format or do we try and make it clever so it will work on either uh, i think for the sake of this testing we will We'll make it run on Debian, but we will leave a way to make it run, or at least we'll leave some notes. That's the way we'll do it. We'll leave some notes for converting it to our pointers. I think that's probably the only bit that needs to be changed. All right, okay. Uh, let's just, uh, oops. Let's just uh, exit this. So we're now we're now back on the file system. Uh, hmm. Okay. Uh, right. So okay. So this one's ready for us to do our testing. Uh, This one, um, uh, this one is where we're going to be doing our editing. So let's. Okay, so let's work on the basis that we're going to write it initially to run on a Debian system, partly because it makes it easy for us to test. And with uh, a big bandwidth, 140 megs, not a huge deal, and Concourse will keep that image around. So, mm, yeah. It'll do for now. Yeah, it'll do for now. Okay, so how do we go about doing this patch? Well, the first thing we want to do is do that extract that we did before, that we saw in that other script. Um, Okay, so we had that, uh, if you remember, uh, if you remember back here, uh, we had uh, blah, 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 uh, where is it? Right, so remember in this script, uh, we've done the extract and then, uh, come on, where are you? Here we go. Uh, yeah, so we've mount, mounted the image with an offset calculated by uh, doing that. Okay, so I don't see any reason to not do that again. Uh. 
These are good reading for what they're coming out. Oh, no, I can see. Oh, okay, well, let's go. Let's go for it. So uh, we want to create a new thing called. Let's call it uh, just sector one equals. I might as well steal it straight off here. Uh, and we are doing right. Uh, so this is a uh, collecting the results of a subshell. Uh, the subshell will run fdisk. FDisk list and it's the image file we want to run. So uh, image file. Okay. So we do the listing, then we pipe that into a grep, which is going to look for the FAT32. Then we're going to pipe the results of that, which should be one line into the orc and we're just going to print the second field okay so that command okay that should get us our sector and then the offset is simply equal to uh, the sectors Okay, so this the double brackets means that we're doing some, some mathematics. Okay, so it is sector one multiplied by five and twelve, which is the standard size for thirty-two. And it's the standard size for blocks on these images. Okay, and then we're going to so now we need to create the mount point. So we'll make sure that that exists. Now, there are a whole load of ways we could do this. Uh, uh, come on. Break, keep up, make directory with all the parents. Now, this, is, this is a useful tip actually. In a bash cell, um, in a bash cell, no matter how many directories deep you're going, whether it's even, even if it's the immediate directory underneath, do make directory minus p uh, because by doing that, if the directory already exists, you won't get an error. Uh, if the directory doesn't exist, then it will create it, no matter how many intervening directories don't exist. So it's quite useful for not getting errors to have a make directory. Having said that, you really want to be sure that um, you know you want the directory. Uh, uh, you don't want to, for example, clear the directory and so on. Uh, basically. You want to know that if the directory does exist, it's okay. So let's create a mount point in our mount area. Now we, we have to run this privileged anyway to be able to do the mount. So uh, let's call it temp image. Okay, and then we want to mount the volume uh, with an offset. Uh, so that mine is always not offset, it's option. And the offset is the option we want. And we want it to be equal to offset one. Okay, and we want to mount the image file. And we want to mount it onto mount temp image. Okay, then we want to just touch mount slash temp image slash SSH. And that's it. And we just want to unmount that mount point. And that should be everything. All right, so now uh, having run this very simple little script. It should fix our uh, Raspberry Pi image so that when we boot it, uh, even on a Raspberry Pi or otherwise, uh, yeah, on a Queenview, 
uh, we will get the same result, which is that the SSH server should start. So, first things first, uh, let's try. Uh, we want to run Vagrant patch pi, and we want to give it our 2020 image. Make sure it doesn't choke at the very least. And oops, unmount because uh, you're an idiot and you put an N in there. It's actually you mount. Okay. And ah. <laughs> now then, the reason for that is it's mounted in. Maybe not. Uh, did I mount it? I didn't mount it, did I? Is it hacking around in one of those contains? Oh, we need to get rid of them anyway. Uh, contains. Docker container. Oh, I did. Yeah, I did, didn't I? Because. What do you know? No, oh, of course, because it's because I mounted it and then there was an error. Ah, dumbass. Which brings us to an interesting point, and that is that our script needs to do a bit of clearing up if there is an error. Uh, we'll sort that out in a second. Let's just unmount that. Uh, try running our script again. Okay. <coughs> so hopefully this time the mount point will have disappeared. Uh, more the point, it will still be there, but it won't actually be mounted. Good, okay. Right, so there's a couple of things there. First of all, we're leaving our temp mount point laying around, which is nasty. We should get rid of it. Uh, the other thing is that if it was mounted and then there's an error, we really want to unmount. So, the first thing to note is that if we try to unmount something which is already mounted, we get uh, a warning that it's not mounted. But it, well, that would be fairly benign by the time we get that error. So, what we want to do is we want to create up here, uh, we want to create our unwinding of our script. Okay, uh, so what we want to do is uh, let's create an on exit function. So, this is all the stuff that we want to make sure is done uh, before we clear the script. Right, so uh, what we want to do is, no matter what, we want to make sure that the uh, thing is not left mounted. Right, so we mount, mount, uh, temp image. Okay. Now then, we really ought to, I suppose, make sure that we're not unmounting something which is not unmounted. The other thing we want to do is remove the directory. Uh, which is slash mount slash temp image. Right. But to be polite, we can do a check here. Oops. Uh, we can do a check here that that directory actually does exist. So if we fail before we get to the point of creating it, Okay, I'll just make sure that that's tidy. And as far as this unmounting is concerned, uh, let me see. How do you check if something is mounted? Right. Ah, I've just realised I've been wishing on, and the screen's been wrong the whole time, which is a bit of a bugger. Uh, must remember to keep an eye on that. Okay, so uh, right, okay, 
Uh, I suppose just as a quick recap then. <laughs> for, uh, however long I've been wishing on. Oh, I'll, I'll just edit this back in. Uh, right. Uh, what was I doing? Yes, so uh, now I actually do want to go back on this screen because I want to check up. Uh, so Linux check mount point. Let's see uh, how to get complete list uh, mounted. Hmm. Check uh, check if the directory is mounted with bash. That's pretty much what we want. Uh, and that looks like the simplest way of doing it. Uh, let's give it a go. Uh, let's go down to here. So mount, we'll just list the mount points. Ooh, look at that. So if we do grep slash mount slash temp image, nothing. But if we mount Mount mm. uh, now I'm not going to be able to do it with an offset so, because I've not calculated the offset. Let's just trust a lot. Here we go. So if uh, so, what we're interested in is if uh, mount. Status here, and then we unmount it. Now, another thing that I've noticed is that all the way throughout our script, uh, oh, actually, um, yeah, uh, on exit. <laughs> Okay, so on exit is not going to do anything at the moment until we do. Uh, uh, trap. <coughs> and we're going to trap on exit if we're exiting the script. I think that's right. Uh, now, the other thing that we might want to do is. Uh, we might want to have this as the temp mount point being uh, slash mount slash temp image. And we'll make that, oops, it's all fingers today. And we'll make that a read only. And now we can go through and uh, change all of these instances to uh, temp mount. Okay. Hmm. okay. So let's try uh, substitute. Oops. So, uh, we're going to substitute uh, the slash mount temp image with quotes dollar open brackets temp mount uh, turn that to out of line. Also, want to do that from uh, here to the end of the part. Right. Okay, so we've now parameterized that. Cool. That looked reasonably correct. Let's give it a go. Stop the slash. Fair enough. 
However, it does mean that that on exit function was being called. It also means that that point hasn't been Okay, now then, how do we provoke it? Uh, we provoke it by let's uh, just exiting there. I want to do is just run uh, shell check over this. Now shell check is not installed because we're on the virtual machine so if I do shell check on here oops yeah shell check's not found so going back to our installing of developer tools I think shell check is one of the ones that we should install uh, at get install shell check Shell check. Uh, uh, call it patch binary. Uh, oh, did I not put it in? Oh, of course, it's in the vagrant, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> it's not in the home directory, it's in the. There we go. Excellent. <clears throat> ah, right, okay, so there's uh, a syntax problem here. There we go. Right, so we've got a clean shell check. Good okay, <clears throat> so that's our patch pi done. What we've got to do now is define the queemu uh, that will allow us to run it up. I'm going to cheat because I'm just going to use that Docker image. Okay, so if you remember. <clears throat> Uh, if you remember, uh, we could just run uh, docker run uh, it, and this is where we need to refer back. Uh, I, I, I know you need to map the image, but what exactly do we need to do with it? Uh, Right, so we need to mount the image as file system image. And that's it really. <clears throat> now the thing to bear in mind is that this is going to run with the IT there. We're going to have an interactive terminal. So what we will see, hopefully, uh, when we start this is uh, this image uh, 20, that image onto the directory SD card 
called system dot image and if I use the leaf charts I think he just uses uh, yeah we can use docker pi and he's got a version which is just the VM <coughs> right let's try that and see what happens unable to find when we download that and a regular file was expected not a file driver but something else was given okay uh, what is the problem Okay, um, rather than mess about, let's just mount the SD card as whatever directory it was. No file system detected. That's because I need to move that one to be that one. What are you doing? Let's try that again, shall we? I need that one to be called file system dot image. Okay. There we go. <clears throat> okay, so this is now booting up. Uh, <clears throat> so this is now booting up uh, Queenview. This is all starting the Queenview and starting up the Raspbian image. And once again, I have completely forgotten to change the screen because I'm an idiot. <clears throat> I suspect uh, in future I'm going to have to. Uh, either keep a closer eye on this or make it so that when I switch the focus OBS changes mm -hmm. come on early days early days I'll sort out all the bugs in this <laughs> the important thing we're looking for is that it starts the SSH server uh, and so Now you might be thinking, this is very slow, and yeah, it's not exactly the speediest way of booting up a Raspberry Pi image, but uh, you've got to remember that this is a software emulating machine, so that's a pretty impressive. So just for reference, we've got a Mac Pro running a Debian virtual machine, which is running an emulated Raspberry Pi hardware, which is running the Raspberry OS. Boom. So we can just log in with Pi and Raspberry. Let's try that again. And there we go. Uh, it looks promising. Uh, 
We've got a bit, little bit previous there. So, now, just to give you an idea of what's going on, uh, we've got at the bottom level, okay, we've got, in my case, Mac, uh, it's a Mac Pro running uh, uh, it's a Mac Pro hardware and it's running uh, Mac OS. Uh, I think it's Catalina. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, on top of that, we are running uh, a virtual machine. Now, the virtual machine is actually running uh, directly on the hardware, which, um, KBM. So it's running. Uh, it's running uh, Debian ten. Okay, and then on top of that, or rather inside that, we are running uh, a container. Okay, mm. which is being managed by Docker. Okay, and within that container, we are running. Uh, Sorry, uh, within that container, we are running effectively uh, an Alpine, I think it's Alpine, it's based on uh, an Alpine operating system. Uh, okay, and that is being used to support uh, a uh, CoinU emulation environment. And within that we view emulation environment, we are running Presbyon, which is essentially a Debian. Okay, and most of the lag is coming from these two layers. Okay, because uh, uh, because it's just not a particularly efficient way of running a machine. Uh, but what it does mean is that everything from this container up is very portable and can basically be taken to anywhere that runs uh, Linux containers. <sighs> oh, that was a bit of a trial, wasn't it? Uh, right, okay, so um, here we are logged into the machine and so we just need to confirm that SSH server is running. Ah, system... Sis, sis, sis with an S system. There we go. And there it is. Good. So the secure shell is running. So this secure shell will be uh, connected to port 22. But you've got to remember the port 22 is trapped within the container. And at the moment, that container, uh, uh, that container, if I remember correctly, that container is publishing the port on. I think it's 3022. Uh, we can actually look at the Docker file. Uh, so, uh, ooh, entry point. Docker VM. Oh, it's a busy box, not an Alpine. Never mind. Uh, and you can see it's doing all sorts of witchcraft. Uh, it's running, it's running, it's running, it's running, no, it's 22. Okay, so it's 22. So it's publishing 22 on the container. Okay, so if we wanted to uh, get that outside as it were so that we could actually SSH directly into the Raspberry Pi rather than have to use this which is the console. Right there's a subtle difference okay if I exit this uh, okay I've just exited the Raspberry Pi now this is the Raspberry Pi's virtual machine console a 
Okay, so this is as if you've actually got the, um, I've got to come back, there we go. Right, so having exited the Raspberry Pi, okay, what you've got here uh, is you've actually got what would appear on the console if you physically plugged a terminal, uh, you know, uh, a display and a keyboard into uh, a Raspberry Pi. Normally, you don't access uh, your Raspberry Pi uh, through the console. Well, I say normally, I suppose a lot of people do. Uh, but we're not going to. Okay, We want to be able to remotely log into the system via SSH. Yeah, hence the going through all this trouble of getting the SSH server working on it. So we've got the SSH server working on it. But we're not connected via SSH at the moment. Okay, We're effectively uh, directly connected to it. Now the SSH port on the virtual machine that's running Raspberry Pi is inside a container. And that container isn't publishing that out at the moment so what we need to do is we need to shut the raspberry pi down and we then need to tell it to take that port 22 that's inside the container and publish it to outside the container but remember <laughs> that the ssh uh, sorry the outside of the container is actually within the vagrant virtual machine right so let's uh let's just shut it down actually we, we can either shut it down gracefully or we can just stomp all over it okay it doesn't really matter uh, so what we'll do, because every time we boot up, we're going to get completely fresh start because the image won't be affected by any of this at the moment. OK, so if I just go back to um, uh, multiple view. OK, so in the bottom here is the console. Uh, so if we go to the top here, OK, and we just make ourselves a super user. And we look at the Docker containers. Okay, here's the container that's currently running. Okay, so this is the container that's running this virtual machine. Okay, so we can just say docker stop c5. Blah. Docker stop c5. Right, so that's the, that's the c5 there. Okay, uh, that's the container ID. Right, so, uh, and you can see down here that it's just killed it. Right, so we don't have to mess about with all the shutting it down and doing. Uh, we just literally just killed it with extreme prejudice. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do now is when we run it, we want to make the port 22 available within the Vagrant Virtual Machine. But we can't make it available as port 22 because that is in use by the Vagrant system. Uh, because that's what we're actually, if you remember, we're SSH'd in from the, we're SSH'd in from the Mac to the Vagrant virtual machine. Okay, uh, so port 22 is being used by the SSH server on the Vagrant virtual machine. So we can't map the port 22 in the container to that port 22. So what we can do is we can map a new port, let's say 3022, onto port 22. Okay, so now port 22 from the Raspberry Pi container is going to be mapped to port 3022 on the Vagrant box. All right. So we have to go through all the boot process again. But once this is finished, we'll be able to SSH from here, from, from, from the Vagrant box, okay, we'll be able to SSH into the Raspberry Pi, okay, uh, but using port 3022, okay, if we SSH'd in anywhere uh, if we try to ssh locally let, well we can probably try it okay. ssh so if we try to go through to say one two seven zero zero one okay so if we try to ssh into that naturally it's going to try to connect to port 22 okay which is the port we're already on so 
it's going to say, well, yeah, okay, fine. Uh, now it's asking me the vagrant password, which is vagrant. Okay, so now we're sort of inception-like, okay, because this is an SSH from SSH on the same machine, okay. So if I exit this, I'm just going to pop up one level, okay. So now I'm no longer SSH into the vagrant box from within vagrant. I'm now just in vagrant, which I'm SSH into from my Mac. So if I exit this, I'm back to the Mac, all right. So now I'm on the Mac. Uh, clear? <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's all just a bit of silliness, really, isn't it? Right. Okay, so okay, so we're, we're back on the vagrant box. Right. So what I want to do is I want to SSH into the Raspberry Pi, which, as I've said, we've now taken its port for SSH and mapped it to the local host 3022. So instead of doing that, okay, I have to do... I think it's minus p yeah 3022 okay so now we can see it's finished booting up so if i do well i say it's finished booting up it's it's reached the prompt i think it's got a bit more to do uh, in fact we're trying to do that now yeah you can see here it's it's not quite ready Connection reset by peer. Oh, okay, so let's just remove that for now. And try again. Oops. It's probably because it already has a, an entry for the local host. And nope. Uh, okay. Bit of a diagnostic run now. No doubt people are screaming at the screen at this point saying, Ah, oh, you've forgotten to do blah blah blah. Uh, Tell you what, because uh, one thing it's going to be is because I'm trying to log in as vagrant. Let's try pi. At... Nope. Hmm. Uh, why is P set with port? So one, what are you doing? Uh, all right, so why won't it let me log in?
Docker, there's a Docker process listening on that port. Potentially set by peer. Okay, let's just take that and then we just switch the screen. SSH incompatibility, perhaps? Wait, possible. I'm not that. We've not got any firewall or anything running. Well, I mean, it's running a standard open SSH, so. Mm. Okay, let's try. Let's just try plugging from. No. Uh. All right. Uh, let's try. Let's try uh, a little bit more talkative, perhaps. Uh, no, don't want any identity files supplied because we're just logging in as is. And the lock works the same. Is it just an incompatibility between the uh, SSH Really? There's a minus capital E perhaps. There we go. Now open open SSH seven. Okay, so the Raspberry Pi it's basically the same version. It's just the vagrant. That's just for us logging onto here. And over here, we don't have any of that nonsense because there's no SSH directory at all because the daemon is set up so that we can just log directly on. Hmm. My brain's starting to hurt. Uh, 
this is what I'm looking at. I'm just I'm just reading down this website in an attempt to find out if there's anything obvious, but You say immediately have to be an accepted or the server. The common reason is this R. Remote SSH server software is malfunctioning. Mm, well, that's possible. Uh, it's completely to drop your connection for some reason. It shouldn't be. Uh, it is interfering with the TCP connection. Mm. Okay. Troubleshoot is on the server. So we're on the server here. Uh, session to open the user root as well just come in as though isn't it well, it's got nothing to <clears throat> so it's not even attempting to authorize See what's going on. Mm. Uh, uh, there's some weird possibilities here about it not being able to access directories, but. I can't for the life of me think. Mm. I mean, everything's going by root. The SSH daemon is being run by root. So why? Uh, Okay, uh, let's take a look at that system CTI again. Uh, right. uh, system CTI status. Of course, if I'd actually been using my brain, uh, I would have used 
Let's see, Jerry will come in. That'd be nice. Uh, more Jerry. It's not going to happen, is it? If we just do that, it's just going to... Mm, it's not really being very helpful, is it? Twenty-two. We're definitely getting something going on here. What about? Okay, let's try this. System CTL. Let's just stop SSH. Okay, and we will run it. directly uh, yeah, we we'll run it directly but we won't run it as a team let's just uh, mm -hmm. uh. using privilege separation directory Sort of container, but that shouldn't. Start it as a demon, it gets the same problem. So, evidently, something I mean, this is, this is just checking the configuration, isn't it? But it's still producing that error.
Right, so this is actually certainly working on the container. But the only other thing is that for some for some reason the port isn't being no because you can see the port 3022 on there. Mm -hmm. Is it possible there's something on the container, something that dock is getting in the way? Why didn't I have this trouble before? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's certainly true that there's no port in the Docker file, but uh, no, I've got to admit, it's got me buggered at the minute. I shall have to have a think. And you probably want your dinner, don't you? Mm -hmm. Your dinner? Alright, I'm going to have to go and have a think about this. <laughs>